Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Walter Mishkite. <laughs> and tonight, we have an interview with the vice president. Uh, Mr. Agnew, uh, you only recently spoke out on the events here in Washington, uh, and it was a very brief statement of loyalty. Uh, would you care to expand on the uh, statement at this time? Well, let me say here and now that I don't intend to stand idly by while some of the more self-serving members of the Fourth Estate uh, try to crucify this man or myself uh, because of my association with him. Now, let me reiterate, I have only the highest respect and admiration for him, and we discuss candidly and openly the possible political ramifications for 1976. Now, let me say once again, and for the last time, I will resign before I ever criticize my leader. Uh, then I take it that you support him fully? Well, how could anyone not support him? Why, when he got up the other night and sang, Fly Me to the Moon, <laughs> there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Agnew, but uh, are you talking about the chief of state? Hell no, the chairman of the board. Scooby dooby doo. <laughs> uh, -dee -dee Pardon me, but the president sent for me. Oh, of course. He's waiting for you. Go right on in. Mr. President. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> it's been over 25 years since my last confession. Ah, uh, Mr. President, open your eyes. You have the wrong religion. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. Uh, I thought Archbishop Cook was due at three. You see, I'm trying to cover all the bases. Uh, you're just about the only one left around here who I can trust. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'm glad you could make it. I know you've been away on your crusades. Yes, I just came back from the darkest regions of the Amazon where I saved over 100,000 head hunters. Unfortunately, I couldn't save the rest of my party whom they ate. <laughs> but that's the prayer biz. Well, we have head hunters around here, too. Uh, but they're out for different parts of the anatomy. Mr. President, <laughs> Mr. President, as your spiritual advisor, I realize that the dilemma in which you now find yourself is a terrible one. As a true Christian, which I know you to be, you find yourself surrounded by the Philistines and the Bernsteins. <laughs> and your cross to bear has become my cross to bear. So last evening in the privacy of my chapel in the presidential suite of the Shawham Hotel, I knelt in prayer and asked the Creator of us all to assist me in the divine guidance in this hour of your greatest need. And there, in the semi-darkness of that room, he spake to me through the power of amazing grace and asked me to deliver this message unto you. Yes, what was the message? He said, tell him to get his ass out of town. It's every man for himself. <laughs> Excuse me, Pat, but I think I'd better get down on my knees and ask for help by saying my prayers. How does it go again? Now I lay me down to... No, me. no, not that one. Well, I'll use the one I wrote up today. Well, I didn't think it was too strong. Well, don't worry, Pat. I had my friend at Laugh-In, Paul Keyes, come in and punch it up. <laughs> uh, here goes. My fellow God. <laughs> let me, let me make one thing perfectly clear. I've always said that you were a team player. 
And as you know, I have my back against the goal line. It's fourth down with long yardage. But I don't think you want me to punt, turn the ball over to the other team. Lord, you stood by me in all my six crises. Uh, you were with me when I sent troops into Cambodia. Uh, you were with me when I mined the harbors at Haiphong. And by the way, thanks for the telegram. <laughs> Lord, you were with me during one of the most important decisions I ever had to make whether or not to take the seven-point spread on the Redskin-Packer game. <laughs> but tonight, I need your help more than ever. And if you're there, Lord, I wish you'd give me some sign, some word. I'm here, Richard. <laughs> I knew you would be, Lord. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, Lord, will you help me? No, I wouldn't. But why not? Well, I didn't mind when you wrecked the careers of Dita Beard. I, I even had an omnipotent giggle over the L. Patrick Gray Michigas. <laughs> as far as Ehrlichman and Holden and Tui. <laughs> but when you pulled that nice fella, Sammy Davis Jr., down with you, that was too much.